Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 23 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the ASP.NET checkbox list control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 16, 17, and 21 of this video series. In these parts, we have discussed about drop-down list control. The concepts related to drop-down list control are also equally applicable to checkbox list control. In fact, both of these controls falls under list controls category. Within ASP.NET, we have other list controls like radio button list, bulleted list, list box, etc. Whatever concepts that we discussed today are also equally applicable to these other list controls that are available in ASP.NET. We will be talking about them in a later video session. Just like a drop-down list, checkbox list is also a collection of list item objects. Items can be added to the checkbox list in the HTML source at the design time or in the code behind file programmatically. Checkbox list can be bound to a database table or an XML file. We have seen how to actually bind a drop-down list to a database table or an XML file. Drop-down list is generally used when we want to present the user with multiple choices from which we want him to select only one option. Whereas if you want the user to select more than one option, then a checkbox list control can be used. Let's look at an example. I have a simple ASP.NET web application project here. Let's drag and drop the checkbox list control from the toolbox onto the web form. And we know that checkbox list is a collection of list item objects. And these list item objects can be added in the HTML source at the design time or programmatically in the code behind file. And we know that a list item object has got text and value properties. Okay, so let's, you know, display the list of education levels within this checkbox list control. For example, diploma, graduate, post-graduation, doctorate, etc. Now I have these list item objects already typed just to save some time. Okay, so as you can see, we have diploma, graduate, and post postgraduate and doctorate having values one, two, three, four. So if I flip the web form to the design mode, you can see all of the you know, list item objects listed here, but then they are present in a vertical direction. Is it possible to change the direction of these list item objects? Absolutely. You just have a, you just have to flip one property called repeat direction. So repeat direction at the moment is vertical, change it to horizontal. That's it. Okay. Now if you look at these list item objects, all of them are displayed in one column. Is it possible to display them in two or more columns. Absolutely. Again, go to the properties and then you have repeat columns by default at zero, which means all the list item objects will be shown in one column. If I set that to two, look at what's going to happen. This will get distributed across two columns. All right. And there is another property, you know, called enabled for each list item object. Now, if you remember, when we discussed about the drop-down list control, if you set the enabled property of a list item object within the drop-down list to false, then that list item object will be invisible within the drop-down list when the page renders. But whereas, if you set the enabled property to false for a list item object within this checkbox list, then what's going to happen when we run this, that list item object, you know, it will be rendered, but the user will not be able to check or uncheck that checkbox. Look at that. That's disabled now. But the others, we can select them. So anytime you want to disable or prevent the user from selecting a specific choice, all you have to do is uh, set the enabled property of that list item object to false. Okay, before discussing about the selected index value and item properties, we will actually see how to retrieve, you know, the text value and the index of each list item object that the user has selected. Now remember, let's remove this enabled property for the diploma. And if you flip to the design mode, you know, they're spread across two columns, but let's remove that. Okay, so remember, 
from a checkbox list control a user can select more than one list item object in the drop down list a user can select only one list item object so you can simply use drop down list one dot selected item and then you can say dot text or dot value that's simple but in a checkbox list control a user has the option of selecting more than one list item object if that's the case I want to retrieve the text value and the index of each list item object that the user has selected so let's drag and drop a button control so when the user clicks that button that's when I want to do that so let's double click the button control which generates the event handler okay so response dot right so we want the text so text is equal to okay now remember the user can select more than one list item objects so we need to loop through each list item object within this checkbox list control so obviously to loop through each list item object we can make use of the for each loop so for each we know that a drop down list or a checkbox list is a collection of list item objects so for each list item li in what's the name of our checkbox list control it's checkbox list one so let's copy the ID and then this checkbox list one has got this items collection which basically returns the list of list item objects so we are looping through each list item within that collection so if you look at that this is a list item collection okay so once we have the list item object all you have to do is you have to check if that list item is selected and how do we do that you can use the selected property of that list item object so and if you look at the selected property it's boolean which means it returns true if it's selected otherwise it returns false and some people use this incorrectly I mean it's not incorrect but there's no reason why you should be doing this if li dot selected is equal to true selected is already boolean you don't have to compare it again to a boolean value of true you can simply say if li dot selected which means if that list item object is selected then what we want to do we want to select the text so response dot right text is equal to li dot text and then let's put a space and a comma so that the output will be properly formatted and similarly I want the value so if you want the value we know that li has got a value property as well so li dot value and what else we want we want the index of the list item object within that checkbox list and if you want the index that's a little different to achieve because on the list item we don't have the index property so if you look at this when I say li dot you don't find the index property there okay now you want the index of this list item within that checkbox list so the way we achieve that is checkbox list one in the items collection find the index index of what the list item object that the user has selected so if you look at the IntelliSense you know this index of method is expecting a list item object to be passed so I am passing the list item object there and since this is the last one we don't have to append the space and comma there and let's put an HTML break at the end so that each selection will come in its own line alright so now if we run this and once we select our choices and when we click the button each selected items list items text value and index should be displayed within the browser window so if I don't select anything I click the button nothing will happen why because it tries to loop through each item nothing is selected so it wouldn't come into this block at all so on the other hand if I select let's say doctorate I click this button look at that text is equal to doctorate uh, this is value is equal to 4 and va index is equal to 3 uh, we don't we have the incorrect output that's because we haven't changed this string so value is equal to and index is equal to so now let's run that again and we should see the correct labels now 
Okay, so I select graduate, click the button, text is equal to graduate, value is equal to 2, index is equal to 1. And you can actually verify that. So if you look at that, graduate is at position 1 within that checkbox list. Diploma is at 0 at position, postgraduate 2, and that's the index basically, and these are the values. Okay, so if I select all of them, obviously all of them should be displayed. So if you want to retrieve the text value and the index of you know all the list item objects within the checkbox list we basically use the for each loop and then use that selected property to determine if the list item object is selected or not okay now can't I use the selected index selected value and selected item properties of the checkbox list control absolutely you can use them you can use them you know for the drop down list that's what we use even for the checkbox list control you can use them but the problem is they only return the first selected item so what we mean by that let's comment this for the time being so when we were discussing about drop down list we spoke about the selected index for example even checkbox list control you know supports that property so checkbox list one dot selected index look at that that's an integer Okay, let's write that response dot write. Since that is an integer, let's convert that to string. Now if I go ahead and run this, look at what's going to happen. Now when we run this and when we select more than one option, only the item which has got the lowest index that will be returned. Look at that. I'm selecting graduate and doctorate. If I click the button, it only returns me one. Zero is diploma, that's the index of diploma. One is for graduate, so I am getting only one. If I select diploma and click the button, I only get zero. So since checkbox list control allows multiple selections, you know, if you use the selected index property, then it returns to you only the first selected item. Okay. Or the in or the item with the lowest ordinal index. On the other hand, if I don't select anything and then click that button, then I get minus one because look at that. I didn't select anything. I get minus one. And this is one way to identify if the user has selected anything at all within that checkbox list control or not. Not only for checkbox list control, we can use that for drop down list or list box or any list control for that matter. Similarly, you can use the selected value property. So instead of selected index, I can use the selected value property. Again, selected value property is the same thing. It only returns the selected value of the uh, you know, one item. And if you select multiple values, it only returns the selected value of one item. Look at that. I click that. I get the diploma. I select a graduate. I still get that one. Okay, if I don't select anything, when I click the button, you know, it basically returns an empty string. And that's why, it, you know, an empty string cannot be printed. So that's why there's nothing. But on the other hand, if I select postgraduate, I get the correct value. So remember, selected index and selected value properties can also be used, but they only return the index and value of the, you know, one list item object. Similarly, I can use the selected item property. Again, the same idea. Selected item returns only one item. And then I can use the text and value property to retrieve the text and value of that list item object. So if I run this now, obviously I am able to I'll be able to retrieve the text of the selected item. Along the same lines you can also retrieve the value. For example, I selected graduate, I click this button, I see graduate. But when I select diploma, now I only get the text of diploma list item object so only one item if I don't select anything that's when the danger is when I click this button what's gonna happen you can expect that now selected item will be null you know there's nothing selected in the drop-down list so when I click this button selected item will property will return null on a null object you're trying to retrieve text property so what's gonna happen as you can expect null reference exception so when I click this button now look at what's gonna happen object reference not set to an instance of an object this is the nothing but null reference exception and that makes sense so that's why it's very important that if you are using the selected item property make sure you check for nulls maybe we can say if checkbox list 
one dot selected item not equal to null only then try to retrieve the text or value property out of it because if the user does not select anything selected item will return null and calling the text or value property on a null object will throw null reference exception object reference not set to an instance of an object okay so now when we run this and if you don't select anything obviously this condition will become false and this piece of code will not get executed and we don't end up with that null reference exception so I click this button I don't get any uh, but if I select I get the selected items text as expected so check for null when using selected item property of a checkbox list control on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day